Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Red Cathedral. This is a 1 to 4 player resource management Rondell economic game. In the mid 16th century, Ivan the Terrible ordered the construction of St. Basil's Cathedral to commemorate his military victories. This took a few decades and many architect teams to complete the construction of the cathedral. You'll be taking the role of an architect team contributing to the construction of the cathedral, trying to become the most successful architect team. How do you become the most successful architect team and win the game? By having the most prestige points at the end of the final round. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components set up and how gameplay works in the Red Cathedral. Now let's take a look at the components. You have the market board. Around the edge of the market board, you have your recognition and prestige track. The recognition track is each space. The prestige track is marked at the bottom of the track. And when you go up or down a prestige, you would go up or down to the nearest point. In each quadrant of the market board, you have spaces for influence cards. In the center of the market board, you have a circle that has spaces for dice. And then inside of that track, you have spaces for resource tiles. Resource tiles, dice, workshop tiles. Some of the tiles have three plus players on them, and you would use these tiles in three or four player games. Cathedral cards. There are three types of cathedral cards. The bases, which have the doors, the middle sections, which have arches, and the domes. On the front of the cathedral cards, you will have the cost for construction, how much ruble you will get for building, and how much recognition you will get for building. Influence cards. These can give you benefits when you acquire resources on your turn. Building plan cards. These will show you the layout for the cathedral that you are building based on the number of players. Solo cards. In each of the player colors, you have a workshop board. These are double-sided, one for the regular game and one for the advanced game. Player markers. These are to mark your prestige or recognition on the track. Banners. These are to claim cathedral sections and open up your inventory. Ornamentations. These can be added to cathedral sections. Also, these add to in-game scoring. Resources. These are finite, and what you have in your resource pool is all that is available. You have brick, stone, gold, lumber, green jewels, purple jewels, and ruble or money. And then finally, you have your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're gonna be setting this up for a three player game which takes 11 steps. Step one, place the market board in the center of your play area. Step two, get player components. You're going to choose a color and get the corresponding workshop board, banners, ornamentations, and score markers. Step three, place the player components. You'll place the workshop board in the center of your player area. You'll place four banners on your inventory and two outside your inventory on your workshop board. Place the ornamentations on the matching spaces in the center of your workshop board. You'll place your score marker on two on the recognition track with the plus 40 side face down. Step four, place resource tiles. You will shuffle the resource tiles and randomly place one on each of the eight spaces in the middle of the market board. Step five, separate, shuffle, and draw influence cards. You'll separate the influence cards by type. These are indicated by the different pictures on the back of the cards. You will shuffle each type and then draw one from each type to place randomly in one of the corners on the market board. Step six, place dice. You'll shake the dice and starting with the recognition resource or cross tile, you will roll one and place it in that spot and then you will go clockwise rolling and placing the remaining die, making sure that you follow the arrows. Step seven, create supply pools. Within reach of all the players, you will place piles for each resource and ruble. Step eight, choose a building plan. You will select the building plan cards with the number of players in the top left. Then you will shuffle those cards and draw one for the cathedral for this game. Step nine, create the cathedral. Separate, shuffle, and place cathedral cards. You'll separate the cathedral cards by type, bases, middle sections, and domes. You will shuffle each type and then select and place the cathedral cards matching the building plan. Keep in mind that you want to flip these cards face up so that the resources required to construct is facing up. Step 10, place workshop tiles. 
You will collect the workshop tiles, making sure to use the three plus player tiles when you are playing with three or four players. You will place those tiles face down, mix them up, and randomly place them face up on each of the cathedral cards. Step 11, choose a first player and get starting money. You'll randomly choose the first player and give out starting money in turn order. Three for the first player, four for the second player, four for the third player, and five for the fourth player. Now let's look at the gameplay. A game consists of a number of player turns until a player completes the construction of their sixth cathedral section, which will trigger the final round. A player's turn consists of taking one of the three available actions, claim a cathedral section, build sections of the cathedral, or acquire resources from the market. Also, players can take any of the two optional actions during their turn. Those optional actions are lose one prestige to gain two ruble, and lose one prestige to roll all of the dice at one location. Now let's look at the three main actions in detail. Claim a cathedral section. This is where you are assigning to build sections of the cathedral. This action is carried out in four steps. Step one, take a banner from your workshop board. Keep in mind that this could open up an inventory space. At the beginning of the game, you only have six inventory spaces open and available for resources. Step two, place your banner on a cathedral card that doesn't already have a banner and is the lowest available in any of the columns. Step three, collect the workshop tile and choose to pay for it or not. If you don't pay for it, you would place it face down and that workshop won't activate for the whole game. If you pay for it, you would place it face up in any of your workshop spots, giving you an ongoing benefit when moving that workshop color die. Step four, if you paid, you get that benefit immediately. The second available action, build sections of the cathedral. For this action, you will deliver up to three resources to any of your construction sites used to build and or decorate. When the building is complete or all of the required materials have been delivered, the materials are removed and placed back into the general supply, the player gains recognition and rubles, and the card is flipped over. Being sure to keep your banner on the card. If there are any unfinished sections below, then that player is penalized. They are penalized one recognition per finished construction above their card. When choosing to decorate, you can choose to decorate on anyone's completed construction, delivering the material and zero to two jewels, gaining the prestige for the jewels. Keep in mind that these give in-game points and increase your presence in that tower. The third available action is to acquire resources from the market. This is carried out in five steps. Step one, announce the die you wish to use. Step two, move the die around the market exactly the number on the die. If it is your color or white, you can spend one ruble per space you wish to add. Keep in mind, when moving, a die cannot end in a space that is already full, where there are three die already located. Step three, leave the die. Step four, perform market actions. You may perform any or all of them. These actions are obtain resources, use influence, and activate a workshop. And then step five, roll all the dice on that space to refresh. Now let's look at the market actions. Obtain resources. You will gain the number of resources depicted on that space times the number of dice in that space. You would place them in your inventory, keeping in mind that the inventory is limited as well as the resources. And you cannot discard any in your inventory to make room for those resources. Use influence. You can perform the action on the influence card in the quadrant that your move is located. When performing a lightning action, it is once per turn, and an infinity action is as many as you want. Activating a workshop. If you have a workshop tile on the matching color of the die you moved, you would get that benefit. Keeping in mind that dice tiles only give you the resource once, no matter how many dice are on that space. And for the white workshop, you would choose one of those benefits. 
Then turns would continue until a player has completed construction on their sixth cathedral card. They would get three prestige and then trigger the final round, giving the other players one last turn. Then after the final round, we will go into the final scoring. The final scoring takes three steps. Step one, move back to the closest prestige point. If you are on a prestige point, you would not move. Step two, gain one prestige point for every five resources or ruble. Step three, gain prestige for tower contribution. The total tower value is two for each completed section plus one for each ornamentation in that tower. Then the players would count their presence in that tower, which is one for each banner and ornamentation on a completed section in that tower. And then first place would get the full value of that tower in prestige points. Second place would get half rounded down. Third would get half of the second place rounded down and so on. Ties split the two places. Then after all of the players have calculated their final prestige, the player with the most prestige points is the most successful architect team and wins the Red Cathedral.